Hello friends, this video on reproduction in plants part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the most important questions. Okay, we understood how male gamete is formed, how female gamete is formed. But the question is how does sexual reproduction occur in plants? How exactly this process take place? So there are, it, it is not a single step process, a couple of steps are involved in the entire process of sexual reproduction and the steps are pollination, fertilization, seed formation and germination. So these are the four important steps in the process of sexual reproduction in plants. So we will learn each of these steps one by one. So let us start with pollination. What is the meaning of pollination? The word pollination is derived from the word pollen grains. So we have been talking about pollen grains and what are they? They contain the male gametes. So pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma. What is anther? Anther is the bilobed structure of the stamen. So stamen is basically the male reproductive part. And what is stigma? Stigma is the receiving end of the female so basically so basically if you look at the structure of a flower this is stigma this part is stigma and where is anther this is anther so from anther to stigma right so this is the anther where the pollen grains are present so the pollen grains get transferred from anther to stigma that is this place so this transfer of pollen grains is called pollination. Now pollen grains are always transferred. That is the male gametes always want to reach the female gamete. And when the two gametes meet each other, that is where the real fusion or the real reproduction happens. So this is the first step that is carrying the male gamete from the male reproductive part to the female reproductive part. Now there can be two types of pollination. One is self-pollination and the other one is cross-pollination. So what is self-pollination? If this entire process of transfer happens within the same flower, that means if the pollen grains are transferred from anther of the same flower to stigma of the same flower, that is called self-pollination because the pollination is happening within self, within the same flower. But if the pollen grains are transferred from anther of one flower to stigma of another flower that is called cross pollination. So basically two different, uh, you know, two different flowers are involved. Therefore, we can say that self pollination mostly occurs in which type of plant, uh, in which type of flowers. So this will occur mostly in bisexual flowers because bisexual flowers will have both male and female parts in the same flower. So only in that flower only self pollination can happen. But when you talk about uh, cross pollination, now when you talk about cross pollination in this case, it can also happen. It mostly happens in case of unisexual flowers. However, it can also happen can also happen in bisexual flowers. Now when will it happen in bisexual flowers? If the male and the female gametes do not mature simultaneously. So let us say this is a bisexual flower, this flower which you see on the screen. So it has both male and female parts. But let us say that the male parts have matured. So the pollen grains have been formed but the female part has not yet matured yet. In that case the pollen grains can be transferred from this flower to some other flower of some different plant. So that can also happen. So in that case cross pollination is happening even though it is a bisexual flower. So self pollination would mean within the same flower and cross pollination would mean different flowers. Now the question is how this transfer will take place? I mean who will carry the pollen grains from anther to stigma? So this transfer occurs with the help of several agents which are called pollinating agents because they help in this process of uh, pollination. So why are they called pollinating agents? Because they help in pollination. So some of the examples of pollinating agents are wind, water, insects, birds. Now wind, when there is a heavy wind, so these pollen grains are very tiny and they are very light in weight. So they get very easily carried away by the wind. Similarly, they also get carried away with water, with insects. So sometimes these insects come and they pick the pollen, pollen grains and, they, and then they carry it to some other 
uh, flower birds birds also sit on flowers and they pick it up in fact this is where insects now insects are a very are very good pollinating agents and that is why the flowers want that insect should come to them because they act as excellent pollinating agents so you remember i was talking about the colorful petals i said that colorful petals attract insects so this is why flowers want to attract insects because if insects come they will help in pollination and pollination would help in uh, the process of reproduction so let us talk more about the pollinating agents so these are the agents which carry pollen grains from anther to stigma of same or different plant so it doesn't matter whether it is happening within the same plant or across different plants but these agents will help in the transfer of pollen grains so there can be two types of agents one is the biotic agents bio means life so the word bio is derived from life so therefore living organisms which act as agents of pollination for example insects and birds they are living organisms but they help to carry pollen grains so that is why they are biotic agents of pollination similarly you have abiotic that is which are non living so abiotic are going to be non living objects that act as agents of pollination for example wind water so in this case pollination just happens by chance because wind or water is not under our control so whenever there is wind pollination will take place so broadly the pollinating agents have been classified as biotic agents and abiotic agents now let us see how exactly pollination happens by wind or what are the characteristics of the poll, uh, of the pollen grains which are carried away by wind now pollen grains carried by wind from anther to stigma that is wind pollination now some of the characteristics of a plant which is pollinated by wind are see the pollen grains have to be extremely light only then they will get carried away by wind otherwise if it is very heavy for example you would have seen that if wind is blowing have you ever seen that big trees are getting carried away with the wind not really because they are heavy enough but light objects maybe a small piece of paper will easily get carried away by the wind so the pollen grains are light they are non sticky that's why they do not stick at a particular place so they get easily carried away well exposed stamens now if the stamens are very well exposed then the pollen grains are also exposed to the wind and that is how it will get carried by the wind large feathery stigma now if the stigma is very large and feathery what happens is when the pollen grains are getting carried away by the wind they get easily uh, you know uh, get stuck in the stigma and that's how they are received by the stigma so the stigma has to be large and feathery but the you know uh, the stamens they have to be well exposed so the pollen grains are also well exposed pollination by water if you talk about water what kind of pollen grains are you know like carried away by water mostly the plants or the pollen grains which are being released in the water so it is a less common mode of pollination wind pollination is more common so this can happen in a number of ways for example water acts as a medium for gamete transfer in lower plants so in plants which are aquatic so in these plants the gametes are released in the water then as the water flows the gametes are also carried away from one place to another and then at certain place the male gamete and the female gametes they meet each other so that's how pollination happens now another case female flowers reach the water surface by a stalk where male gametes are already released so sometimes this also happens let's say on the surface of the water male gametes are already present so the male gametes are present here and the female gametes have been released somewhere deep inside the water so through a tube like structure they are released on the surface so that both of them can meet so a lot of things can happen even inside water fertilization also happens inside water for example for organisms like frogs they really is their eggs and and leave it in the water and then in water fertilization happens that is fusion happens between the gametes and then finally a new organism is formed so wind water these are all important pollinating agents so now let us talk about pollination by biotic agents that is by living organisms so the most common living organisms are the insects and uh, the birds and in insects also the most common pollinating agents are the bees so honey bees are famous for pollination and you would have seen that wherever there is a garden with colorful flowers all around you will get to see a lot of bees now these type of plants are called animal pollinated where 
animals act as pollinating agents just look at this example rats rats can act as excellent pollinating agents they can also carry pollen grains from one place to another sometimes the pollen grains might stick to their uh, paws or to their body and that's why as they move the pollen grains are also they are transferred from one place to another there could be insect pollinated plants that is the plants where insects act as pollinating agents like honey bees butterflies so many other insects and we come across this very commonly in lot of insects wherever you have a garden you see a lot of insects hovering around the plants so in insect or animal pollinations so some of the characteristics are colorful because the color attracts the insects or animals towards them so that that's why i said that petals play a very important role in order to attract insects second is fragrance sometimes the sweet smell of the flower they also attract insects and that's why they tend to come near the flowers and that's how pollination happens nectar now the plants are rich in this juice nectar which is rich in nutrients and provide you know, a lot of nutrition to the insects so honey bees in search of nectar they come to the flowers but when they take their nectar for their nutrition at the same time they also help the plants by helping in their transfer of pollen grains so pollen grains another important thing because you know in this case the pollen grains has to be there which can sometimes the insects also feed on the pollen grains and sometimes they help to transfer it from one place to another thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again